Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's see, do we have the slides up? Okay. Yep, great, thank you. Um, so hello everyone, my name is Alanis von Radetzky. Some of you know me, hi there. Um, I'm working for Fraunhofer, which is a German organization for applied research, and I've been running a, a network of cities and companies and research institutions for the last, oh great, thank you, for the last couple of years, seven or so, um, trying to drive the sustainability agenda and um, also innovation in cities. And, well, I believe actually the inability um, today still of, of all of us to channel sufficient investments into innovation is one of the largest barriers and obstacles to a, um, you know, an acceleration of the sustainable development of cities. Um, in the past, it, had, it, was, um, it was a bit difficult for many mayors and elected mayors to drive sustainable development in their cities because in the past that was usually related to taking something away from people, right? Like kind of restricting, being, being restrictive with your policies, etc. But now with data coming in, with, with innovation coming in, all of a sudden, since like yeah, seven to ten years, this entire discussion, this dialogue has turned into you know, a sustainable, livable development of cities being actually an opportunity an economic opportunity, an opportunity to drive livability and actually increase, increase livability for your citizens, and at the same time, um, solve some of our sustainability challenges. But nonetheless, bringing data into the game also, I think we have, um, ask, we have to ask ourselves quite some questions, which we maybe haven't asked ourselves very much yet, because bringing data into the game um, also brings a, a, a fully new type of um, good, sometimes public good, sometimes a private good, sometimes it's a restricted good, um, in, into the game. And it changes the way um, how we, in our cities, are citizens or are customers or are sometimes just the fuel to induce the data economy with our private and our own data. And that's, I think, uh, questions around this um, are questions that we need to ask ourselves. Um, and um, uh, let me just, just throw some concepts or some, some, um, some thoughts um, towards you, and I'm happy to discuss that later on a little bit. So um, what we can do with data is, is great, right? In cities, um, just take, for example, the idea of an energy transaction platform, that platform that's operating on the blockchain. That's an amazing, it's an amazing solution. This kind of shows it a little bit. Just imagine you've got rooftops. Um, you can rent out your rooftop to people who want to invest in, into photovoltaics. These people can put up photovoltaics on the rooftops and then there is a district storage system in place that can actually store, store your renewable energy. And you can rent some storage space for your renewable energy and then, um, for example, sell that energy back into the grid when it's most expensive, or you can optimize yourself, uh, like self-consumption of the energy. It's a great, it's a great and amazing solution that um, fully um, ups the uh, opportunity of getting renewable energy into the game. But that, it's but also it's just a tool. The, the the instrument behind it is a tool, and the way how we program the algorithms, they dictate whether we use it to make energy more expensive or whether we make energy cheaper with it, whether we use that system to sell energy to the grid um, to optimize our own, uh, uh, our own return on investment, or whether we sell energy um, at the best optimum level so we get cheap and affordable clean energy for everyone in the district. The system doesn't care. We have to take the decision about that, right? Uh, also here, that's a great example from Eindhoven. Um, we, uh, we visited our colleagues in Eindhoven a couple, a couple of weeks ago. Eindhoven has done a terrific job in um, setting up a living lab around public safety and security. So there's sound sensors in place that can actually detect aggression in the voice of people, right? And it, you can combine that with light. And you can then, for example, um, combine that with uh, police data and, and be you know, right on spot with the police um, when something happens. So this is a great solution that is actually helping to uh, make our city safer. But at the same time, it also means that something is a, a, a sensor is listening to your voice all of the time. Do we want that? Is that what we want? Right? Another example of using data in cities, uh, e-bike sharing. 
So there's these massive, um, um, these large companies uh, like Mobike bringing lots of these non-stationary electric, uh, no, not e-bikes, it's, it's just normal bikes, but you can just rent them anywhere. You, you take them, you, drive, you ride around, and you put them down somewhere else, and you just leave them there. It's, it's a great approach to increase the health of citizens, to get everyone on bike, but at the same time, it's also possible to produce something like that, right? Because if you don't attach it to accountability and a good management system, it is, you know, there is, there is the danger of actually not improving the quality of life in the city in these systems. Also, for example, rental platforms like Airbnb, they are a great tool um, to boost the local economy, to, to give someone who has an apartment in a city an additional income. At the same time, they also bear the risk to actually drive up prices in the city centers and push out no ordinary families, especially in cities like Lisbon or Prague, like, you know, these cities that are heavily frequented by tourists. So there seems to be something, I guess the bottom line here is there seems to be something in the data, in urban data, connected to the question of values. And value in the sense of the value that we can create from the data, but also the values that drive our decisions around data management and data usage. And these questions are questions that we need to discuss and talk about and actually um, find ways to handle in order to um, come to actually smart, smart cities. And I really liked your point of saying, why are we doing it? We need to ask ourselves that question. And interesting, uh, I, I guess it's interesting if we try to reflect the different takes on the value of data um, coming from the corporate side and coming from the, city, uh, the cities, the municipal, muni municipality side. I can skip that one. Um, there are some very good approaches to running and uh, to, to running city services on data. Good, a uh, good example is the Guadalajara data platform. It's a data platform running on Fireware, which is integrating um, lots of different services. Um, so basically, the lighting, um, the public transportation, the waste management, public space, etc. It's all integrated in that platform, and the city is actually able to define KPIs. Um, on the public service providers and measure the public service providers based on the own data that they provide back into the system. It's a terrific example that is actually helping the city to provide much better services, but it's not open. It's a closed platform, right? It's a closed platform. There's a different example, I, and I guess most of you will th know that from the Copenhagen City Data Exchange. Um, Copenhagen tried to really, you know, take a radical approach and together with Hitachi create a massive open data transaction platform. It's like a, a, a trading platform, um, which didn't really work. So there were millions invested into this, um, but it didn't really work. And why didn't it work? Well, first of all, because the market is too small. One city as a market for data, is, it's, it's just, just too small. But also, the value behind the use cases isn't clear. So this is a platform where I can buy data sets. If I'm a city representative, if I'm you know, working for a, for example, infrastructure company in that city, I can buy data sets and improve my services based on that data. But there's no reference to that, right? There's no models that would actually give us a clear idea of what value I can create for the city and for myself if I use that data. So no one is buying it. Um, so there is some type of dilemma that we are having here with regards to open data and city data. And um, we haven't really found an answer yet. So how much of open data should a city provide? Right? If you just provide open data, I would say, um, it, in the past, that has been a very nice and good exercise. But just open data doesn't really, doesn't really make a difference. It has to be good open data. You need to actually invest into refining and into plumbing the data. Now, how do you decide what, what data to you know, what data to refine and to plumb, and when to stop putting your resources into that. How do you decide about the costs and the benefits in open data? Um, so this is, there is no s simple answer to that question, right? And especially when it comes to third-party data. So what can a city do to actually get third-party data on board? A lot of the attractive data for cities isn't owned by the city. It's owned by third parties. So. How does a city decide, for example, uh, take Dublin? Oh, just one minute. Oh, my goodness. 
one and a half. Oh God. <laughs> okay. I'll, so I'll, you'll just need to give me three more minutes. Sorry for that. <laughs> so, so how does how does Dublin decide whether or not to purchase a, a data set of Mastercard for let's say hundred thousand euros? How do you decide if it's if it's worth that money? So so that's the city's dilemma. And I skipped a couple of slides there. Um, the city of Eindhoven again. Sorry guys, I'm highlighting you again. Um, <laughs> did a very good job in putting up some principles for data governance. Please look at the IoT chart of Eindhoven or talk to, talk to them, uh, to Jan sitting, uh, sitting there um, later on. I also wanted to briefly take a look at the private, uh, at the, private the corporate part of it, um, which is also, I think, quite an Im important uh, qu um, view that we need to take. So. The platform economy has is is really like the, the benchmark nowadays for for data economy for citizens like for business with data. These large corporates like Apple, like Alphabet, like Microsoft, of course, like Facebook, all of them are very successfully running the platform business. And this is the benchmark for everything that we do with data in uh, also in cities, and that's also kind of spoiling us a little bit, or not spoiling. Well, it it's kind of maybe setting a second setting in a wrong benchmark because not all not everything that we can do with data in cities is is able to reap all that massive return on invest like the platform platform economy the key enabler of the urban data business model is you have zero marginal costs or very very low marginal costs in your data you use user generated data and you put automation on top of it and by this you provide a value added service you have very, very low costs, and you generate a high, highly you know, replicable, replicable return on invest, and you are amazingly profitable as a company. That's kind of like the, the holy grail of the urban data business model. Um, but of course, there is much more to that, because also here, um, you know, the company it, it has to be brought into a system where open data, uh, interoperability, and shared data and shared risks, uh, risk and like risk and benefit sharing is um, in the system. Also, competition obviously um, plays a large uh, plays a large role. So I guess I just need to jump um, some of these slides. Sorry for that. I'm happy to talk to you uh, more in depth um, later on. But I guess the key message is that we need to de-risk invest investments in smart technologies, and in order to do that, or for for actually de-risking investments in smart technologies, we need to understand and to quantify the value of urban data. That is, I guess, a key thing that we haven't solved yet. And um, I'm not going into this. This is also another framework. Um, we've come up with a cumulative data value framework, which we are now bringing into a, a larger initiative with London, uh, with Copenhagen, with Dublin, with Berlin, with Vienna. And I'd really be happy to have a discussion later on um, ar around that. The idea is to actually get something between 15 to 20 use cases with a value tag on it, where you'd actually be able to tell what is the value that you create with one set or accumulated set of data in one specific city. Um, so sorry for being over time. Thanks a lot for your attention.